Thank you very much, Rudy. It's uh, good to be here telling you all about the new release that's just coming. You can imagine when you're, when you're responsible for putting the release together and getting it out, it's a little bit scary. Um, I'll try to convince you that I can feel fairly confident that we're going to get there. And it's not false confidence, right? I really do do feel that we're going to get, get everything out in, uh, in time this year. So release 16.2 includes, as you've been told, a bunch of new plugins. It actually includes some other things that no one's been telling you about explicitly. Um, so 16.1, um, you may have been underwhelmed because it was a bug fix release to what we had before. Um, with an awful lot of testing and a lot of making it stable and really good. You can imagine that the developers in that time were also making other changes. And so there's a, a bunch of updates to the code base that have gone in since what was 1.2.4, which we bug fixed for 16.1. And those have gone into 16.2 as well. And I'll show you a couple of those. You've, you've actually seen one already in the Smart R talk. Um, a bunch of new plugin features that we're adding. Um, we've also, I don't know if you noticed, but 16.1 didn't include the genome browser. The developers weren't sure about maintainability, um, but we put it back in. It's a good test of a feature. If you noticed it wasn't in 16.1 and you missed it, please tell us, because it's a great um, way of knowing how valuable a feature really is. Um, a bunch of bug fixes as well to 16.1. Some of these were things that we found out after 16.1 came out. Others we actually picked up in testing 16.2, and we went back and found these were 16.1 bugs we're fixing, not new things that we'd introduced. And I'll talk a bit about some improvements to ETL, um, the single step installs, and, and some other things. We'll start with the updates to the code base, because there's one change that you will notice as soon as you go into 16.2. So this is the Analyze tab cohort selection in Transmot all the way through to 16.1. You have subsets 1 and 2. And you have three boxes that you can fill in, and you might get more boxes if you, you fill in enough. When you go to 16.2, you get this. And it's different, and it's really nice. But we weren't sure at what stage we should stick it into a release. You can't put it into a bug fix release, like 16.1. Um, but I work with the Etrix project, which is a European project providing Transmart to a, a bunch of European um, projects and users. And they really like this, and we slipped this into the previous Etrix release. Um, it was just newly out at the time, um, and they love it so much. And so we've also put it into Etrix version 3, and it's now coming in Transmart 16.2. So you drag things into these boxes. Um, you can drag in age and select on age. You can drag in categoricals and select on those. And it just expands as you go. So there's always one empty box at the bottom, and it can go on and on and on. I think the old one had a limit of 20, if I recall from looking at the code. I don't think anyone tried 20 variables in cohort selection. But this one just carries on through, and the code has all been updated to work with that. A bunch of things like that. Um, summary statistics have been rewritten under the hood. Um, and it's much cleaner code now. Um, we found some bugs there. Um, it turns out if you don't have summary statistics, it didn't like you. If you give it a breast cancer study, so nobody puts the gender in a breast cancer study because they know the answer for most of them, it didn't like that. So we had to go through and tell the code, you know, if there's no, no gender data, no race data, please just give me nothing like you normally